We're back for what I believe will be the final video of section 3.3. We're going to do the last objectives, which is finding the mean, variance, and standard deviation for grouped data. So remember grouped data, we learned about that in section 2.2, I believe, continuous data tables. All right, so we have the time um, to wait between Old Faithful eruptions when you're sitting there at the geyser, having been there myself, listening to a lot of parents screaming at their children while they waited for the stupid eruption. How long should you expect to wait between eruptions and listen to people yell at their children? So that's a good question. <laughs> so from personal experience. Now, um, I don't know what I was really thinking here because you, you can't really do these with StatCrunch. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Right? Oops. Um, these are really, I mean, you can do them with StatCrunch, but they're no easier than doing it with Excel. Now I'm going to go here, and I've already typed this in. So this is 3.3 example four hopefully let me go back yep 3.4 three example four and i'm going to save it because i've been doing a lot of work here okay now here's the trouble the trouble is that we need another column oops you probably want to know how i did that so let me just here so i go up to the top and i make it so it's a down arrow see when you put the cursor up near the b and i right click insert and there i've got a new column so I'm going to need the midpoints, right? Because the problem is that 40 to, this is really 49.9999999, right? Nobody writes it like that, but that's what it is. And this is really 59.9999999 and so on. So I need the one number that will be the best representative of that whole class. Now, how do you figure out the midpoints? Well, we learned that in chapter two, but I'll remind you, you take 40 plus 50 because it's 49.9999999 forever. So you take the, the beginning point of the next class, right? And then you add them up, put them in parentheses, add them up, divide by two, and press enter. There you go. Now for the next one, you could do the same thing. You could say equals 50 plus 60, add them up, divide by two. Or you can notice that, hey, these are 10 apart, 10 apart, 10 apart, 10 apart every time. So I could just say equals that last midpoint I found plus 10 and then drag it down. That'll be a lot faster than doing it the other way. Cool. All right, now we got our midpoints and we need those because we need single values. If you remember when we were doing these weighted means with the Scrabble and these weighted means with the grades and this weighted mean with the grades, you had single numbers here to multiply. So you need single numbers here to multiply, okay? I'll get rid of the 49.9, it's bugging me. Oops, nine, there we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need the sum of these frequencies, right? I'm gonna label it for myself. Sum equals sum of those numbers, right? Remember that's the denominator, we've run into that before. I'll put it over here, denominator, okay? Then the numerator for mean, Right? For the mean calculation, the numerator is the sum product, which is equal to sum product of, and then you type this array, so highlight B2 to B8, comma, comma, excuse me, and then C2 to C8. Close your parentheses, enter. Now what's the mean? The mean is equal to this number divided by that number. That should be a very familiar calculation for you. We've done it now like three times. There's the mean. Cool. All right, so we know the mean. The mean is 74.85 minutes. Mm -mm. Okay, what about the median? Well, there's no good way to do this. We're going to have to kind of gauge this. So notice that there's 200 total scores, right? 200 total eruptions, right? So the median is the halfway spot, halfway eruption time. It's actually between eruption time, right? right? Which would mean that it's going to be, there we go. So it's the halfway eruption time. So that means there's gonna be 100 times below it and 100 times above. Now, where would that happen? So let me let me just figure this out here. If I take the sum of this one and this one, I get 52. 
All right, let me do it again. Sum of um, 84, whoopsie, sum, there we go. How about I go to C4? How many would that give me? That gets me 75. And if I go to C5, that gets me 81. Ugh, all this sucks. What about C6? There we go. All right. So somewhere in here is my hundredth one, right? So I'm going to have a hundred on the way up to this, and then I'm going to have a hundred after this. Okay. So it's, on the, it's in the one of the first ones that happens in here, right? But it happens. So that means that my median happens in this row right here. I'm going to give it a color like blue. Okay. So that means the median, if I could spell it, median is equal to 85. Okay, because 85 has 100 values below it, because you get 8, 4, 23, and so on. And then the first few of these, there's 100. And then you get 1 and 11 and the remainder of these, and there's another 100. Right? So the 85 is the middle way point. It's 100 below, 100 above. Done with that. Kind of tedious, but, you know, you're just kind of logicking your way through it here. There you go. I'll just leave it. Bold, I don't care. Oh, I will put in minutes though. Minutes, right? And this was minutes. Cool. Now the variance and the standard deviation are going to be much trickier to find. So let me go back to Excel. And we're going to have to do some work here. Now the first thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need the difference between the midpoint and the mean. If you recall, that's what variance is. And then I'm actually, that was my mistake, I'm going to put it in parentheses. So parentheses, midpoint minus the mean, right? We found the mean, it's in this cell down here, and I'm going to give it dollar signs, right? Okay, and then I'm going to square them. So remember, this was called the deviation. We learned about it in th section 3.2, and then we squared those deviations, remember? Okay. And then I'm going to multiply it by the frequency, which is right here. Oops, except I put that totally in the wrong cell. Hold on. There we go. And then I'm going to drag it down. It's a really complicated formula, I know. So let, let me kind of reiterate what I did here. OK, I took the midpoint. I'm going to write it as my title, as a matter of fact, minus. Now I'm going to give, I gave the dollar signs to the mean, right? So it had dollar signs with it. Closed my parentheses. I squared it. And then I timed it by the frequency, right? In a nutshell, that's what I did down here. Let me, let me retype it so you can see, okay? Equals parentheses, midpoint, minus the mean. Press F4 to give the mean dollar signs because you don't want it to change. The mean is the mean no matter what. Then you close your parentheses. You square it. Then you times it by frequency. Enter. And then you drag it down. Okay. Now you're going to need the sum of this column as well. So I'm going to go over here and drag my sum. And it finds the sum of all of that. Okay. I don't need sum product. I just need the sum. Boom. All right. So now what's the variance? The variance, if you recall, oh, by the way, just on a side note, this is a sample, right? I mean, this isn't all the times. I mean, Old Faithful have not, has not erupted only 200 times, and that's it, right? So I need the sample variance. Okay, now to find sample variance, what you do is you take that sum, and you divide it by the total, 200, take away 1. Remember, n minus 1 for that denominator, okay? We learned about it way back in section 3, 2. And that means the sample standard deviation remember it is equal to the square root sqrt oops of the variance enter and there you go you've got your standard deviation i know it's a pain um this is one of the very few things that actually a calculator does better than excel but um Excel is, again, what most people are going to have to use in their jobs and stuff. So that's why I teach it for a variety of reasons. Okay, so it's a, it's a giant pain, I know. But it's, it's really important to know how to do it. So you, you take your midpoints, your frequencies, you sum and sum product to find your mean, 
right? And then divide. And then the variance is this tricky formula. And then you drag it down and then you find your sums right here. I'm just going to kind of give them a little color. So, right, we drag the sum formula over, found the sum. We divide the sum by that, or excuse me, we divide this sum by that one minus one. So divided by 199, and then we take the square root of it. All right, so let me put those in there. We've got the variance and the standard deviation. Now they're only approximate because we used, right, they're approximate because we used um, midpoints. Because we used midpoints, all these values, including the mean and the median, to be honest, are approximations. And that's true up here on the mean and median as well. Right? When you're using midpoints, you just don't know as much. right? So you kind of guesstimated where you think things were. I know guesstimate's not a real word, but I'm going with it. All right, next, interpret the mean and the median in the context of the situation. So if you're sitting around waiting for Old Faithful to erupt, right, one should expect to wait 74.85 minutes for Old Faithful to erupt. Give or take 14.72 minutes, right? Standard deviation. Done. So what do you notice about the distribution um, that should be mentioned if you were going to discuss this? So you can see it right here with the mean and the median. Notice how the median is much higher than the mean, right? So remember, if the mean is much lower than the median, it's in skewed left. So the mean and standard deviation, oops, if I could spell it, are probably not good measures of center and spread. Right? We learned that they're not resistant. So if it's skewed and has a tail like this one does, then it's not going to be much good to you. Don't believe me that it has a tail? Well, if I go to insert column chart, there you go. See it? Skewed left. It's got a big old tail. Like that. Okay, I can just kind of knock that off to the side. I don't need a title for it. Right, it's just a quick picture. Right? So you can see that it's skewed left. You can see it there in the graph, and you can also see it here, right? By the way, these, I should put this back, these horizontal numbers are terrible. So if I right click, click on there, and then right click on select, oops, no, nope, cancel. Right click on, there we go. Click on that axis, right click, select data. You edit your horizontal axis categories, and we want those midpoints, which were 42, 45 and so on. There we go. Boom. Now we've got a graph. All right, I think we are all done with section 3.3. Everything's great. And I will see you back here bright and early for section 3.4, Measures of Position. See you then.